This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Hello, everybody. It's Brian, Sebastian, Movie Reviews, and more. Here we are live again. Tash, if it's Tuesday, then it's Movie Reviews and more, right? <laughs> yes, it is that. It's there Taco Tuesday and Movie Reviews and more. <laughs> very, very true. So with that, live on K4HD TV radio podcasting, talk for media, television, radio podcasting, also streaming at the same time, 5 o'clock, every place around the world, women on TV. iTube 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, Worldwide TV network and more. So with that, so Tosh, all the way from Miami, it's good to see you back. Let's talking about you real quick. Well, you know, everything is going good on this end. Still, you know, in quarantine, and I am, I am, I've been doing a lot of interesting stuff during this time. So it's been a, it's been a productive day today, even though I'm stuck in my room. <laughs> hey, so I'm glad got- that I'm glad that you're here. And obviously, before she starts speaking, Terry's happy already. The one and only nonstop Terry Marie, over three million views a day and counting, with us. Hi, Terry. Hi. Hi, Tasha. I heard you got the dreaded Corona bug. Uh, yes, I did. It, it caught up to me. It caught up to me last week and and it's still in me. So how, are you having symptoms? Or are you having like a mild case or how are you feeling? Well, the first two days were like really, really, really bad. I got like everything you could possibly get from the virus, like fevers, chills, uh, cough, diarrhea, like everything that you get, I got it in two days. It was the craziest thing, but right now I have no symptoms. Like we're, we're good. I'm just so like already anxious to like, you know, be out, be out again. But you know, it, it eventually it was supposed to happen. I live in Florida. So <laughs> did you lose your um, taste and all that? Cause that, a couple of my friends got it and that was how they knew they had it. Cause they couldn't taste anything. No, I I still have it. That's the only thing. That's the only symptom that I never uh-huh. got. So I'm actually very grateful because I really love enjoying the taste of food. So uh, that's the only thing that st- is still is like stuck with me. It's like it, it's crazy because my girlfriend got it and that was the only symptom she had is like she just couldn't taste her food. And the only reason she went and got a test is because a couple of other friends had it. But it's just like it's just weird how it affects people so differently, you know. So I mean, so- not that I haven't gotten it. So. And the good thing about that is that she's with us. I've been talking to her a couple times a day, uh, and I've, I've she's got a lot of homework projects to do. And with that, so from Canada, I've been watching this young lady for a long time now. It's very interesting. Let's bring in Janet Lynn. Janet Lynn Morrison from Canada. Here's the thing about this. All of a sudden, as of yesterday, she became an international bestseller. I was really, really happy for her. So I had to go back into the YouTube because YouTube is so slow with what we're doing and change the numbers to update everything. But I also wanted everybody around the world to see the interview that we had done a couple of weeks prior to that because I couldn't be happier for them. And I immediately wanted to call her. I hope she doesn't get bothered that I'm calling. But you guys, you girls know I like to call people and check in and make sure everybody's okay. But, you know, here she is, a speaker, author. I like this one, professional dreamer. I really like that. <laughs> Mindset expert. We have a mindset men- mentor, Katarina Kazayas, but we don't have a mindset expert. That's important because she has a lot to say. The one and only Janet Lynn. On her well, book, <laughs> Forever Is Today. We got to say that Forever Is Today because I love the cover. I can't stop looking at it. And I think of your daughter, Maddie, all the time. 
Uh, thank you so much, Brian, and so great to be here. And it's very exciting. And getting your call really made my day. So thank you so much for recognizing um, me and for coming uh, coming right out and shouting through the phone and congratulating me. So thank you. Well, I think it's important. You know, we don't like to do a one and done here. You know, these are two of the co-hosts. You know, but there's there's eleven more. <laughs> so you know, when you know, you know, so Terry and and Terry's always on every show. I can't get rid of her. That's a good. I, thing. Well, I, I've been with Brian for what, how many six years now? Yeah. Yeah, six years. Yeah. No, you're not getting rid of me. <laughs> and, I know, and, and, and I know Tasha's not going anywhere because she's doing well on her own. So, you know, Janet's coming back in June sometime with her daughter. And I look forward to doing that because talk about that book, Forever is Today, and why it's important. Well, Forever is Today is important for so many reasons. One of them is, of course, it's a beautiful love story, and who doesn't love that? Um, but Maddie is my daughter, and she's 20 and she is on the front cover. There she is there. And I have three daughters, but Maddie five years ago was diagnosed with an illness called um, uh, autoimmune hepatitis. And so we found out at that time, just out of the blue, that she had less than 7% of her liver functioning, which, uh, you know, the liver, everyone thinks that it regenerates, but it only does so if there's enough of it with healthy tissue. So um, we were told that she may be looking at having a liver transplant. And it was a, a very difficult time and her health was very dire at that time. So she's uh, she's doing well, but the, the story is all about how um, your forever moments are always right now, they're today, they're in the present moment, because you don't know what tomorrow is going to hold for you and yesterday is already gone. So it's just so important um, to live in the moment and to um, not be a victim to your circumstances and to just um, take whatever's happening to you in your life and just forge a new plan and have love and friendship and just to really, you know, squeeze the juice out of life and just live it anyways. And, and don't let anything. So you, can, you can relate to that. Can't you right now? Yes, mm -hmm. I, I really can. It's a, it's like a book about, you know, like just finding the positive aspect of just everything that you go with life. And um, I did want to ask, Janet Lynn, a question. Sure. Um, so I was taking a look at a podcast that you were on and you were talking about um, healing with forgiveness and that really um, was like uh, connected a lot with me because sometimes, you know, you, you get into a fight with someone or, you know, I had a, a really close friend that we kind of parted ways and and I was never healed from that until I learned how to forgive. And um, I just really wanted to just thank you about your insight on that podcast because it's it's very important. Like uh, forgiving is very it, it's it's definitely will help you heal. And I felt uh, like what, what you were saying on that podcast. Oh, well, I'm so glad that it helped you. And, you know, it's really a selfish thing to forgive because it, it helps you. And it's just, it's a really beautiful thing when you can forgive others and they don't even have to be around. They don't even have to apologize, which means that essentially you can always be in control of your life because if something isn't going well, if there are um, things that have happened to you and you've been treated a certain way by different people, you can just make the decision to forgive them. And I think that when you don't, you just harbor this resentment and it turns into, you know, months and then years. And I think that that's what creates illness and disease, uh, anxiety, depression, and all of that stuff, because it doesn't go away. It just festers and it becomes a wound. And um, it's just so much better to not live that way. So it just feels great to forgive. <laughs> so and, it's, and it's also not easy to, uh, people don't realize that sometimes uh, and I tell the girls a lot, as you go up in stature, as your brand goes up, there's going to be those people that kind of drop out of your life. Um, and it's, and it's not easy. So a lot of times people have been there for years and it can be difficult. Uh, so I, I tell certain people, write a letter, write it down, get everything out, burn it up and go on because you can't, you, the more you harbor those, those resentments, things do come up. This is how cancer is developed and things like that. And that's not good. It doesn't, doesn't serve you any good. It's, forgiving is one of the hardest thing to do. And that's what they mean by love your enemy, love your neighbor. It's, it's not easy. It's tough. And Brian, I just yeah. want to add that because I'm one of those people you had that conversation with because 
during this COVID thing. I mean, I lost some of our friends. I don't know. People just seem to change, but I feel like I just sometimes you outgrow people and it's just, you see things in a different way and you have to like us understand that too and not have a resentment that, you know, you have grown apart, if that makes any sense. Cause I think that's really harder when you grow apart from somebody then I don't know, like I had horrible things happen with my ex husband, which I had to forgive him for, you know, but, but it was only hurting me. It wasn't hurting him to be angry. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Jenna, you talk about a little bit, a little bit of those things in your book about that also, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's just, uh, it's one of those things that has been so prevalent in my life. And it's just one of those life hacks that I have. And uh, I thought it was really important to include it because um, you know, the, especially because of the readership and the age and just what the story is all about. And especially if somebody's ill and they don't know what the future holds for them, they just really need to be in touch with their emotions and have those relationships in their life that mean something to them. They just need to have them um, in good standing so that they can concentrate on themselves and the illness and getting better and just going on with life and trying to help others as well. So the main character in the story has this illness, but I tried to really feature her as a strong woman, who young woman who was caring for others as well. So again, as we are doing onto others, that helps us. So that's another life hack. <laughs> Let me ask you this, what was it like when you got that call or that email, you know, notifying you that you are an international best-selling author, what, what's that like? I'm not an author yet, but but you know, I, I was I was trying to put myself in. I wonder what she's feeling like. When did she know? What was that like? It was wonderful. Um, you know, any anything like that that happens to you and you, it's a surprise. I love surprises. It's the best thing in life is just receiving a surprise like that. And I, I try to live my life in such a way that I don't anticipate and I don't have expectations. So that's, it makes surprises all the more amazing. And it just felt so wonderful. And I felt very grateful. And that's another feeling gratitude um, that I like to have every day. And I, I really, all of these different things are choices. Choices. And when you're thinking about doing them and um, making it a habit to feel gratitude and think about all the people that helped these things happen, these wonderful things, I just thought, wow, you know, now I have this title that I feel very proud of. And, um, and it's just really great because I've got three beautiful daughters and all of their friends and I own a couple of businesses and I have a lot of people that are following me and I really want to lead by example and be that person in their lives that can help improve the quality of their own lives. So I, I was just very, very pleased. And now I can go on and write more books and I can always, I'll always own that title. And I feel like I, um, I deserved it and I, I, I'm going to own it and I'm going to use it to, um, to better other people's lives and also encourage other people to do the same thing. Because I think a lot of people think they need a lot of um, special talents in order to write a book or in order to do many things in life that they've always dreamed of doing. But they just have to really want it and decide to do it and they can go for it and they can actually accomplish everything they set out to do. Terry, that kind of sounds like what you wanted to do. Also, you wanna you wanted to be that person to inspire a lot of women too. Women too, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I my message is you know being in fitness, but um, is to never give up on anything that you want to do. I started competing at the age of forty six. I'm now fifty three. <laughs> it's hard for me to say that, but I mean, it's just like life's not over at forty. It's not over at fifty. It's basically you're as young as you feel. You can accomplish anything. I'm always, you know, trying to do new things, um, have new goals set for myself. And it's just that you can't ever give up and it's not over till you're dead. You know what I mean? It does not. And you keep having to strive to be a better person and learn from your mistakes. So I love that. kind of the conversation I've had with Brian about that. So, and I mean, Brian knows like I went through a really bad divorce. Um, my ex-husband ended up putting me in the hospital like I it was it was like a Jerry Springer on acid like just crazy time in my life and I lost everything and was able to come out of that and rebuild myself so you know even when horrible things happen to you and you hit rock bottom you can you can rise up like a phoenix rising I guess and come back mm. up Jenna wow. Lynn 
Janelyn, talk about the writing aspect of this. When did you start writing this and what was that like? Because we've, I've, I've got a lot of friends now, all of a sudden they want to write now. I'm like, where were you last year when it was the perfect <laughs> time to write, you know? Yeah, it was the perfect time. It really was. I've been writing here and there for years, but it was just so great. I just, with COVID is when I started just after COVID. So it was like last, the end of um, March last year. And I thought, hmm, I, I really am a very busy person. I'm always doing a million and one things. And I thought, well, a million and two sounds good. So I started to write the book and I gave myself two months and six weeks later, I was done. And I'm an obsessive compulsive kind of personality. And so when I get into something, especially if I love it and I'm enjoying it, I just wanna do it all the time. So I got addicted to the characters and, and just the act of writing itself is just really cathartic and, and interesting. It's just so interesting because you don't know sometimes what's going to happen and what's going to develop while you're writing. And it's just really fun. So I had a lot of fun writing it into the wee hours of the night. And it was just something that I did. It was just like this trip that I took for six weeks. And it was really fun. I think that's fabulous. Oh, me too. <laughs> it was great. Tasha, I knew you were about ready to say something. I could just see it coming. <laughs> yeah, I was just waiting for the, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> so um, when you started writing it, did you, the idea that the book is now, was that the first idea um, that you had or did it kind of change as you were writing? You're like, oh, maybe I should focus on this and the characters. How was that? It was interesting because I, had an idea of what I wanted to write about. And really, you know how they say that um, when you see a very successful person, um, it often seems like they were just an overnight success. But what people don't realize is all the years, all the practice, everything mm -hmm. that goes into it behind the scenes. So I've been wanting to write a book like this for a few years now. And I just I didn't have the right idea. I knew I wanted it to be a love story because I really like the idea of making people feel. I think so many people are half asleep, sleepwalking. They're just, you know, in this monotony of life. Mm -hmm. And I like to get down and dirty with real things, you know, things that happen and just, you know, they may be painful and they may make you um, feel a lot of emotion and it might make you cry, but I like that. I want to make people cry. I want to make people feel something. So uh, I finally figured out the idea. And then, of course, I had to talk to my daughter and make sure that she was okay with that um, because she keeps to herself. She's, you know, it's, I didn't want to um, uh, do something that she wouldn't like, but she really surprised me. She's such a strong girl, Maddie, and she and my other daughter supported me as well. And they gave their ideas to me, which is really cute. Because my 16 year old gave me a few ideas here and there. And and my eldest daughter, she helped. Uh, she was my creative editor. So it became like a family project in a sense. And as I was um, as I started, I thought I can't really continue until I find a twist. I needed like a fun twist, something that made it different. And I know that there's no book or movie out there already. And when I came up with that twist, I was jogging um, in my neighborhood. And I, when I thought of it, I just sprinted home and I like, crashed through the door and I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, you got to listen to this. And it was just so exciting. And once I had that twist and the idea, it was just a matter of sitting down with my computer and developing the story. I literally started from the introduction and, um, and then I just sort of, uh, it evolved. I started with the chapter of chapter one and I started, and then I got to the end, went to chapter two. And that's not always how people write. Sometimes people write here and there and kind of you know, blend it all together. But my process was just very meticulous and it was just really interesting. I never knew what was going to happen and what the characters were going to do. They literally just, you know, did their own thing and and uh, I supported them. So I hope that makes some sense. Hey, Janet Lynn, talk about what was her, what was Maddie's reaction when she found out that her mom was an internationally bestseller with her photo on the cover? 
<laughs> she was really excited. She's done some modeling, that girl. And um, she's supposed to be in the Orient or something right now. She got this great contract right before COVID started. So she's getting involved in some other things. But she was really happy for me. And um, she's very excited because we are starting a foundation called the Gilbert Foundation. And it's in process. It takes about a year um, for the lawyers to do everything and to get everything approved. But Gilbert is what Maddie called her liver, which is kind of mm -hmm. cute. Remember, she was 15 at the time. And so we did a few events for the Liver Foundation and we wore these t-shirts for the event and she wrote Gilbert. And, uh, you know, it got a lot of people talking. And so we call it call her liver Gilbert and so we thought of this Gilbert Foundation and it's going to be something that um, raises funds not only for liver disease but the nice thing about having a foundation like this is that we can decide where the money is going to be allocated mm -hmm. so it can be allocated to the liver foundation in the u.s it could be uh, cancer it could be diabetes it could be whatever we want it to be and so maddie is an amazing speaker and both of us love to speak and we're we love the idea of giving back and we're hoping to when things go back to normal have some events um, we're going to have like a talent show and different things like this in Toronto and the big city or maybe travel and do something out in the States and just raise funds, raise awareness so that people um, can learn about this illness and others and um, play a role. Because that's I think people want to play a role. I think people want to do something with their money. They want to be a part of something, but they just don't know what to be a part of. So we're going to help them, definitely. So the Gilbert Foundation is on its way, and we're really excited about that. I think that's great. You also have a music background. Talk about that also. Oh, boy, where do I start? Okay, so I came, um, my, my family was very, very musical. Both of my parents uh, sang, played the piano and various instruments. And it was just my brother and I. And when we were very, very small, like three, four years old, we were um, taught music and music was everything. So school, if we had time for school, we were allowed to go to school. But aside from that, we were at home practicing six to eight hours every day. I also played, so I played the piano and the violin and my brother played the piano and the cello. And we used to be called the Burton Quartet. That's my maiden name. And we used to travel and we used to play the four of us for retirement homes and things like that in a lot of different churches. And um, that was just wonderful. I think that's where my love of wanting to help others and just make people smile and, and make people feel something came from. And so I went all the way through the Royal Conservatory of Music, all the way to the top, and I got my, it's called an ARCT Performers um, Certificate and status. And so I did some competition and it's all classical piano. I just absolutely love the romantic era with Rachmaninoff and Chopin oh. and Bach and Debussy and and I just I'm I think I'm almost my happiest well there's probably four or five things that I love to do but sitting down at the piano is definitely one of them and I just I could sit there all day just playing so Tosh when she when I was I was asking about that on the earlier show we did a couple weeks ago when I was looking I'm like oh she plays piano I'm like oh I wonder who she loves and I was like oh I love Shostakovich and Stravinsky and I was like and and I wanted to go more into that because I could see probably how she was writing, and uh you know and and again I still can't wait to get her book, um so hopefully I'll, I'll have that because I love hard copies, Jan and Lynn, just so that you know oh, I I love showing them and with that I got to show this really really quickly so uh, we had Mark on remember Mark we had Life Remix he's an internationally bestseller now too and it's obvious the reason I'm showing because I just got his book from London it took that long to come. So with that, oh. congratulations, Mark, also through Hashmark. And then um, Judy and Dave sent me my Hashmark cup, which I really adore. Uh, oh. I like this also. Also, Janet Lynn, in your book, you have AR technology in your book. What pops out from your book? Okay, well, I'm holding a copy of my book right here, and I just got my copy, so I just got my box, so I'm going to send one to you tomorrow, I promise, and to you wonderful girls in the background, too, so yes. I promise you Thank that. You. 
And um, so when you when you scan the front cover, um, you my AR experience is a little bit different than some people's. Mine is my voice and my daughter's voice. So um, I talk for I think about a minute and twenty seconds, and then she says something about her her experience and it's just has our my picture on the front and it's just an audio file but it's just uh i think that it's so neat that you can say something and reach people you i can't force people to read the prologue i can't force them to read the back the acknowledgements and i can't i can't control any of that so i have two minutes where i can actually you know pop out of the book and um have a relationship with someone and say something poignant and important so it was a really great opportunity and uh way to go hasmark i mean that was just so cool to be able to offer that to everybody so it's really great hey T tosh tell her what you do i can see it coming uh, <laughs> right so i'm a singer, a Latin pop singer from Miami. Um, right before we got on the show today, I actually, um, since I'm in quarantine right now, I've been like, just how you were saying about like, that you wanted to write a book and you had this idea. I've been like really, really itching on writing a song, but just never found like that topic or that inspiration that I needed to like get everything like flowing. until so, like when I got into quarantine, um, I, I was like, I'm feeling so like crazy in these four walls. And then I was like, I might as well write a song about what I'm feeling right now, you know, as I'm going through like quarantine. And then when you were talking about like how you like literally when you were jogging, you're like, oh my God, that was literally me when I got stuck here. I was like, oh my God, like everything is literally flowing out. Like, um, it was just like. I, I love that I was able to find a positive thing about this. So um, it brings me back to last year. Uh, I just recently started uh, uh, going for the music career when quarantine happened, and and I'm actually very happy about it. I was I had quit music um, a long time ago because of like all the hardships, and it's like a very tricky you know, industry to be in. But honestly, like, I've been so grateful that I've got that, you know, the opportunity to like go and do music and really, really um, just focus on what makes me happy, what I'm grateful for. So um, it's a Latin pop, it's Spanish, that's all. I only sing Spanish mm. music. But um, I am, you know, exploring a little bit of like maybe doing a bilingual, maybe doing a little English there. But I, I really, really love the the Spanish melodies and just mm -hmm. how like all the the instruments and the beats, how it can make you feel, like how your book, how you want to make people feel, like if they cry, if they're happy, if they're in love. That's that's the type of music that I want to bring out into the world. So. Wow, that is amazing. Congratulations. I'm so excited and I can't wait to hear some of your stuff. Wow. Thank you. Oh, I, I own. Have... Sorry? Oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's just I, gonna like... I own a couple of gyms and that's the kind of music that I play all day. It's just, I can't get enough of it. It's just so amazing. So I'm really happy for you. Thank well, the, you. The, also, the other thing about that is that Tasha, um, she's figured it out. She loads all of our shows up. And it was one of those things where a friend introduced her to me. And I'm like, oh, I could utilize her this way. I mean, I, I still have ideas for your daughter, mm -hmm. Janelyn, believe it or not. I, I oh. actually, I want, that's why I want, I can't wait to have you guys on in June. But it was one of those things where Tasha's picked it up really, really quickly. And I couldn't be more proud of her. And you, uh, you also mm -hmm. have to talk about how you got COVID because you didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. So you got to tell the audience what happened. Well, honestly, I live in Florida, so <laughs> so I'm gonna blame Florida for this uh, for me catching it. But honestly, it, it was I think it was uh, working. I work at a restaurant, so um, it's an indoor restaurant. We don't really have like any ventilation, so I'm pretty sure I got it from there. And um, it sucks, but you know, I feel like eventually it was going to happen. It's uh, there's just so many cases here, and the crazy part was that I had my vaccine appointment for Thursday, and I was like, great, I like I was this close from like getting vaccine, and then I got this. So it was just like, <sighs> but it's okay. I mean, I've been able to do a 
I've been able to like edit some videos. I wrote a song. Like it's it's honestly, I always try to find the positive thing out of anything that's negative, and that's what keeps me going. And it has been keeping me sane these past few days is that I've been able to do stuff creatively. Did it make you feel like it? Did, did slowing down help you? Then you think because sometimes slowing down helps. Yes, you don't realize yes, that you're forced to do it, but. Yes. I mean, yes, I felt like I was already like getting back on, you know, working a lot and just like really focusing on all this stuff. And then this is like, OK, now you, you have so much free time. Might as well tackle what you've been wanting to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, it. I guess, you know, like everything happens for a reason. And and I'm just I'm just grateful that it wasn't I didn't get hit like that hard with it. So. You know, always, always try to be positive in everything that life throws you. Yeah, because you never know what's going to happen. You, it, I, I, I say, you know, you try to make plans, but things get in the way. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you always have to have different routes to get to where you want because you can't. I mean, you can plan life, but it doesn't always happen the way that you want it to. But you mm -hmm. can still get to the same goal by not nice. giving up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Janet, Janet Lynn, <laughs> talk about your other businesses because I was I was curious about the, what you were doing with them as you were writing. You said you were talking about fitness gyms, right? Yeah, um, I own a few franchise uh, gyms. They're called Nine Round. You may have heard of them. They're um, it originated in the States down in South Carolina, and it's a 30 minute kickboxing workout. So it is just a really kick butt workout. I've just loved it. I've been in the system for six years and it's just so amazing. The workout changes every single day and like, I mean, every day and it's just so much fun and it's for ages 10 and up. We've had 10 year olds, we've had 86 year olds and everyone in between. And the greatest thing is that it's for all fitness levels. So nine round is just, um, really an amazing concept started by Shannon Hudson and his wife, Heather, and the two of them are at the helm of this. And uh, we're in 22 countries now, and it's wow. only been around for 12 years. So it's really been exciting. There's so many great people. And just like the three of you, it's so neat because you, um, you're, you're doing your passion. You, you seem so happy and you know, Terry, you were talking about fitness and you look so amazing and so young. And it's just it's just really inspirational for me to um, be having this chat with you guys, because um, like the same thing with being a part of Nine Round, all of the people who are doing it, they love helping people. They love fitness. They look amazing. They feel great. And when you're exercising and feeling great and eating great, that you're sleeping better, you're you're behaving better, you're just having a better attitude all around and I think that our world really needs people like that so that other people can feel our vibe and they can just think you know what I want what he's got over there and there's something about her and and I think that that's really great because we could all be, all be leaders all right Terry hold on before you say I know you're gonna say something I gotta say this so Janet Lynn uh, almost all the girls are into fitness uh, from Linda Steele to Anna Whalen to Crystal Coney uh, all of them, but it's Terry who wants to be the one that really wants to show women, particularly what she really wants to do. And I've been encouraging her and I even nag her. She and I go <laughs> back and forth to write her book. I really want her to write these things down and get it out of her system. What would you say to encourage her to do this? Start today. Exactly. Start today. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, I don't know, some finger paint, whatever you want. And just even if it's only for two minutes, just start and make it a habit. Do it a little bit every single day. And you will just feel so good about yourself. And it just think about what you want to give to the world and what you want to leave. Um, you know, having something like that um, to leave and to uh, put into the world, something that came from you it's just such a wonderful feeling it'll just you know um, uplift you and it'll just make so everyone that knows you is just going to be so proud of you and I think that you got to you've got to do it and if you want any help you can get in touch with me and I'll spend some time talking to you and, and giving you some more little hacks and little tips that I've tried that work Ooh, yeah. I see a little smile on nonstop's face. Ooh, you see that, <laughs> Tosh? 
<laughs> it's just that sometimes and I've had this conversation with Brian, like I just have so many things going on that, you know, sometimes I just need to like at the end of the day, just write stuff down mm-hmm. when I'm thinking about them. You know what I mean? But it's just like, that's why my name is nonstop because it's just constantly going, it seems yeah. like. So, but I mean, I get it. It just, and I do want to, yeah, my message is, is just to never give up no matter how old you are. And, you know, I, fitness helps you stay young. I mean, it's just, you know, it just does. Yeah. And so many people don't seem to realize that I have people that come into my gym and there'll be like 35 and they'll say, Oh, I can't do that. Or I'm too old. And, and then, you know, they say, Oh, you know, they just don't believe in themselves. And I'll be like, I'm 50 years old and I can do it. Like what makes mm-hmm. you think you can't? And mm-hmm. a lot of people are always like, oh, you know, I'm getting so old. And when I retire and they're in their forties and I just, I don't yeah. get it. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, you're as old as you think you are. And if mm-hmm. you feel that you're too old and that you can't do it, you won't be able to do it. And, but what's that, what's that going to do for you? I mean, what's going to happen when you're 55? What's going to happen when you're 60 or when you're 70? I think when I'm 70, I'm going to be doing everything probably even more than I'm doing now. I'm still going to be jumping out of planes if they'll let me and scuba diving (laughs) and going here, there and everywhere. I'm not going to slow down. And uh, I'm just going to just, like I said, at the beginning, I'm going to get every single drop out of this life. And I, I want to be thoroughly done when mm-hmm. it's the end. And I just want to say, okay, and that's it. So, yep. so you know, Nick, the next time we have her in June, I'm going to, we got to have Linda Steele on with her. So, because mm-hmm. here's the thing, Janet Lynn, I, I love women who are very, very strong. I think it's important that, you know, movie reviews and more, we honor what they do, no matter what they like to do. Right, Tosh. And it's one of those things where Linda had, she had two gyms in Chicago. Um, mm-hmm. So imagine opening those two gyms at five o'clock in the morning every day. And so, she, you know, her and her daughter are coming on next week for their macro made meals. And so we just did a show with them um, Monday. So next week will be the 420 show that we do. Why fitness is good with the aches and planes with things going on like that. What was it like when it was locked down where you were with your gyms? How did you do that? Yeah. Um, well, we don't take uh, myself and I work with this um, fellow named Steve. He's my partner. And um, it's so great because we have the same mindset and we just believe that you just keep going and you just don't stop and you don't have any pessimism. You don't let it in at all. And and we love to help people. So even though we weren't allowed to be open, we uh, went on Zoom and we uh we restructured everything and we came up with workouts and we just did everything that we could. We started this closed Facebook group called the nine round sidekicks and nine round knockouts for my other location. And we were posting inspirational things. We even did this challenge with isogenics and we did like a 30 day challenge. And there were people that didn't even know us that were joining the challenge and we were calling them on the phone and supporting them. And it was just really fun. And um, you just get busy doing other things and the ideas flow, especially when you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people and you mastermind. So you could be on the telephone, you could be on zoom, you can, you know, you don't have to see the person. You just have to be able to talk with them. And as soon as you start talking about your ideas and brainstorming, it's amazing what will come up. And it may not happen right away. It may happen while you're sleeping or the next day or the next week. And it may be somebody else's idea. But that's how you get more ideas. And um, and and it was just it was difficult. But at the same time, who wants to be stuck and feeling like things are difficult all the time? I'd rather feel empowered and feel good and feel like I'm moving forward. So we just kept doing that and Steve was just so amazing and my family was really supportive and we have great, great members and again, the people at Nine Round at the corporate office and all the other franchisees, like it's a real wonderful thing. We all love fitness and I even reached out to some other fitness owners from Orange Theory and um, different other places that are just in 
my town and you know i reached out to them and i said what are you guys trying to do how are you feeling about this and they thought it was really strange and in the end they said you know it's pretty cool janet lynn that you're reaching out to us no one's ever done that before like you're our competition and i said well yeah but it's a healthy competition and you know we exactly. all we all love fitness and every there's like a lid for every pot right so some people might love uh, f45 some people might love yoga it just it depends and sometimes you like them all and you try them all so you just want to stay really open and really supportive and uh, again if you do that with every part of your life you're just going to live a great life so i see i knew there was more to you i just knew <laughs> there was the martial arts in there someplace because that's how i started with everything and i you know when i stopped about five years ago but i'm still stretching out and everything and then a lot of my friends who've gone on to be in the martial arts hall of fame, you know, we have them on our shows. We all used to train together. Think of Billy Blanks. You probably remember him from Taibo. He was my first sensei back yes. in the early eighties. And before really? he started doing, yeah, before he started doing movies. And I'm like, I would have never have known <laughs> that, he, that Billy was mm -hmm. going to do that and bring his daughter in. So we all get together because Terry and I usually go to uh, LA fitness mm -hmm. shows and we're there for the media to cover a lot of the a lot of all the fitness people. So I'm glad to know that aspect of stuff with you. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, the other thing about this, it is about health. So, Terry, I have one of these for you. Uh, yes. Awesome. So this is uh, this is the heifer. This is from Skosh. Mm -hmm. Skosh, if you don't know them, Janet, Lynn and, and, and Tosh, they make portable heifer air purifiers and deodorizers for the cars, small offices and stuff like that, because a lot of people lot more people have allergies and things like that. I don't have this stuff, but I like it because I sleep with cleaner air and I love it when the office. So that's one of the things. And then, um, so Roxy, we have to show for the aches and pains, we have to show the pop and the Barclay um, image because that's important because we all got our pop and Barclay stuff and we all used it for stuff. You know, um, Terry's mom uses it. I was using it for my knee. Tasha, I think, uh, used it for her mom and stuff like that. So we have to always tell people to order on this through movie reviews and more. And then you get anything off, 15% off. And I think that's a great thing. So mm -hmm. with those coming up like that, Janet Lynn. So what is this other book? Did you have another book that you had also? Um, I wrote a book about nine years ago, and it's called Surviving, Surviving 17. Surviving 17. Yeah, and I pulled it because um, it uh, it's a bit antiquated now. Um, it was before cell phones and all that sort of thing when I wrote it because it was based on my own teenagehood. So um, it was my first foray into publishing, and I'm very excited to say that I have rewritten it. So it's actually in editing right now, and um, I've changed the story a little bit, and I've changed the characters, and it's a really great read. I think that people are going to love it. It is a young adult novel specifically, and the idea is to teach the reader that um, in order to navigate life, you need something that's yours, something that you love to do, especially when you're a teen, you know, you may lose friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, and all that sort of thing. It's tough to get along with teachers and siblings and parents. And so you need that one thing that is always going to be yours that at the end of the day you can go to. And so, again, the the girl in the story was based on me and it was music for her. So, um, wow. you know, I'm really excited to do that one. And then I have another one called My Million Dollar Soup that is in editing too. And that's my first nonfiction book. And I'm really super excited for that. That's like my life compilation of, of uh, ideas and um, moments and what I've gleaned from life in 50 years. So I'm really excited to get that out there too. Well, you definitely don't look your age. That's for sure. I said that the first time I saw you, definitely do not. Uh, now I know why. It's the music, <laughs> it's the fitness part of stuff. And again, mm -hmm. Tasha, you were jumping around in your room. And I love that video that you created because I could just tell <laughs> she's going to go nuts. So that's why here's a couple movies. Watch <laughs> these. What else are you doing? I was even turning them on like, chant these words. This will help you a great deal. <laughs> and I did chat them this morning. This morning, I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this today. And honestly, it, it set such a great tone to how I started my day. Um, it was honestly awesome. Honestly, like I went to go get tested today. And then when I saw that I had gotten positive, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bummed, but then I started chanting, 
these words and I was like, you know what? Like, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be okay. You know, like we're, we're, we're good. We're chilling. It's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna happen when it needs to happen. So. No, you're going to do well. I mean, I couldn't be proud of you. Uh, you know, and Terry, like I said, Terry's a work of art. She's like that painting, that fine painting that you have to keep working on. And then it just <laughs> blossoms. She is, okay, she is I like that. I was afraid what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Terry was looking a little worried. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to say? <laughs> All right, so Tosh, give you social media links. So uh, you can follow me at Vocally Tosh everywhere. And then my website is natasharumbosmusic.com. Terry? Uh, ter Terry Marie nonstop um, on all platforms. And then my website is terrymarieofficial.com. Janet Lynn? Mine is Janet Lynn with a hyphen dot com and same on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And uh, I'd love for you to uh, visit my website and see what I'm all about. Yes, I've been doing that a couple days in a row. <laughs> so it was you. I was wondering. <laughs> I get exactly. an email that says you've got 12 new views. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I wonder who's looking at my website. Oh, that's so thank you. me as well. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. Thanks for the support. Ja I love Janet it. Lynn, if, um, so for your book, Forever is Today, what would be the three words that you would describe this book uh to like that you want people to get from this book? Three adjectives, anything like that, that is this book. Mm -hmm. um, that's such a great question. Uh, three words, um, lovely, deep, and inspiring. I, I like that, mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I can't wait it to is. read it, I'm, 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 I'm a sucker for love uh stories mm -hmm. but also stories that like have positive in the end so i'm actually pretty excited to read that well just make sure that if you read it and you can spread you can share this uh with everybody that you know that might want to read it too is you have to start with the prologue and yep. go right from chapter one to the end and don't think that you're done then because you have to read the epilogue if you want to know about the twist and it really is not something that you can anticipate it's surprising and it's just going to be a real roller coaster ride with lots of emotions get the kleenex out and give me feedback i would love feedback and even if you didn't love it that's okay. Like, I want to hear about that too, but I know you are going to love it. So Enjoy also talk it. about, talk about Hashmark, how that came about. Did you pick them? Did they find you? How did that happen? Well, that was interesting. I started to really amp up my personal development about a year ago. And um, I got into the Bob Proctor coaching and when I did so, I received an email from his wife, Linda Proctor. And Linda Proctor had this ebook, and I was really curious to read it one Sunday morning. And so I read it, and of course, that gave her my information. And she reached out and she called me. And I guess she said to me that, hey, I saw that you were nearby because she's in Toronto, and she wanted to talk to me about a job opportunity. And so I got to know Linda Proctor. And again, I was doing the Bob Proctor coaching course. And at one point in time um, within his course, I had to write a three page vision statement, sort of like a, a day in the life of my perfect day. And I wrote it and I shared it with Linda Proctor who gave it to her husband. And Bob Proctor said to his wife, you must tell this this person that she has to get in touch with Peggy McCall. And so Peggy McCall has this, um, she's uh, written 19 books now. She's a wow. New York Times bestseller. She's amazing. She's just this amazing abundance expert, uh, manifestation expert. And she works very closely with Bob Proctor and his organization. And um, she has a course that is really amazing for authors. And I took her course and within her course, of course, she has um, people that she introduces you to. And one of them was her sister, Judy from Hasmark. So that's how I got into the Hasmark book family. And uh, it's been a really wonderful experience. 
And with that, I got to leave this because I, I, I thought I had another 10 minutes. I mean, this was mm -hmm. went so fast. I was like, oh, I can talk about movies. All right, so I'm going to mention this. So one movie for the week, it's going to be The Nevers if, for the people who have HBO Max. So that one. And then the other one would be I'm catching up on Doomsday Patrol, also on HBO Max. So Janet Lynn, thank you so much for coming out Movie Reviews and More, vocally Tosh, nonstop. And I have to always leave everybody with this. If you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More, and we will see you next week. Janet, thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much for coming on. It was appreciated. Thank you. You guys did such a great job. Thanks. I hope I did all right. That was good. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you feel better, Tosh, and uh, I hope nobody else gets sick. And Terry, please reach out. I'd love to hear more about you. You sound very interesting. And, and good luck, Tosh, with the music. That's just thank so exciting. You. And thanks, Roxy and Brian. Thank you. And thank you for trying so hard with my name. I really do appreciate it a lot. <laughs> you should you should see all the things I've got to remember in my head. <laughs> names are I'm oh. terrible with names, so I have to always apologize. Everything else, I'm I'm kick ass at, but names, oh my mm. god. Well, my name in the sports and